Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you how you can adjust the sensitivity of your controls to make it harder, easier, or simpler to fly different aircraft. So we're sitting here in the lovely Cessna 172. It is a fall day for sure, and I appreciate the lovely stuff that they've got going on here. Would have been a crisp day. I actually couldn't fly because, of course, there's a temporary flight restriction that blocked me from getting there, but that's okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how you can adjust the sensitivity of your controls. But before we do that, let's see what I mean by that. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my automatic pilot here. I was using that thumbnail trim here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and execute a couple gentle turns. Now, what I'm looking at here is how much effort it's taking me to go ahead and execute the turn as smoothly as possible. Now, my controller is a little different than many controllers because it is uh, basically connected to a long extension, which means every single motion I make of the controllers is basically going to get multiplied, meaning I can be extremely, extremely gentle and have precise control. This is insanely critical for things like helicopters. It just makes your life a lot easier in that regard. All right, that looks pretty good there. Again, I'm just kind of getting a feel for what it feels like in roll. How smoothly can I do this? Now, there's a couple things I'm noticing immediately. Uh, one thing I notice is the fact that it's taking me an awful lot of effort um, to put my controllers where I want. Now, this is a Flight Simulator 2024 thing. They intentionally dampen your controls. So if you do stuff like that, so I'm going to take my joystick, I'm going to pull it to one side and let go. Do you see how it only kind of bounces back and forth? That joystick probably did 10 times more oscillation. They do that intentionally, and it's actually really irritating, but it's one of the things you have to put up with. So that tells me my controls are not sensitive enough in roll. Now let's experiment with pitch a little bit. Pull it up, go up to about 10 degrees, just feel it for a second, and go ahead and push the nose back down. What you're trying to feel is how easy it is for you to control. Now one of the things I'm noticing here is when I pull back, do you see how there's that slight little... That's a technical term for oscillation when I get there. And I push the nose to see how it kind of has this kind of thing. I'm exaggerating it now so you can see it better. That tells me that that control is probably a little bit too sensitive uh, because it's uh, creating that extra little bit of oscillation that doesn't work very well for me. Now, the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push the nose back down. I'm going to go ahead and give our controls a kick of the rudder here. <laughs> you see, I got to compensate. Now, that is plenty sensitive enough. It's actually too sensitive. Hey, you want to see something fun? Watch this. Whoa, there's your spin. <laughs> now, the reason I'm doing that is I want to feel how sensitive the rudder is. Now, go ahead and execute a turn with the rudder. So I'm going to go ahead and take a left turn. I'm going to give a little bit of a left foot. So that was way too sensitive. I can tell you immediately that uh, the amount of rudder that I have to give here, that's a little bit too much. And again, it's based on the rudders that I have. Your rudders are going to be different, which is the whole point of why we do this. So I'm going to go ahead and take a turn the other way. And look at that. I over-ruddered it bad. Again, that's muscle memory from flying the real plane there. All right. So I'm not going to give it any rudder. And it skids a little bit, but that's OK. Excellent. We have everything we need to know. Let's head up to the controls page now. Now, the controls page is really, really, really cool. Now, the way it's divided here, I'd actually put the automatic pilot on for a second there, just for safety. Actually, wait a minute. Let me make sure it's right. Yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. I just want to make sure it doesn't fly into the ground when I'm not watching. So what we're going to do is head over to my controller, and now we're going to go ahead and type in the axis. Now, the first one is my aileron axis. Now, this axis is pretty good. Now, when I press this little gear icon, it'll bring up a screen that looks like this, and there's a thing that says tweak action curve. Now, if I open that up, you can see my actual curve versus my control. Now, if you look here, you'll notice the fact that my controller is not centered. It's actually slightly off to the left. I'll move my controller a little bit. And you'll notice what I've done is I've set a dead zone so that my controller is less sensitive at the middle. That's actually very, very, very typical for this. Now, the cool thing is if I pull my control out of this, you can actually see my ailerons will start cranking a little bit because they're actually manipulating the controls of the aircraft. Now, if this was sensitive or too sensitive, I could adjust this. But remember, my aileron axis was actually pretty good. So let's go ahead and take a look at my other axis here. Let's go to my pitch axis, which is my elevator. And again, everybody's got a different way of doing it. They call it elevator axis. It's pitch axis. It, that's just not accurate. So what I'm going to do is come over here. We're going to take a look at this action curve. Now, you notice when I pull my stick back, uh, we've got a little bit of a dead zone there. I can actually probably reduce that dead zone a little bit because I'm noticing it's a lot more centered in that direction. There we go. We'll reduce the dead zone. Now, remember before that I was saying it was too sensitive. Now, there are two philosophies to uh, attack the sensitivity problem. The first thing you can do is you can adjust the curve of the sensitivity. When you pull the curve to the left, you make your control less sensitive. When you pull the curve to the right, you make the control more sensitive. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back to zero. The other thing you'll notice is you have what they call extremity dead zone. Now, if you pull the dead zone to the right, you take your entire controller and you reduce its total sensitivity. 
That means when I pull my stick back, I only have half of the available elevator that I had before. Now that's an interesting problem because um, we've actually left the linearity alone, but we've lost the extreme control that we're going to need. Now let me demonstrate just how crazy this can be. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to, oh, we'll do one half here, which means my controls only have one half of the total motion they did a minute ago. Now watch what happens when I get back to the sim here. All right, let's pop the autopilot off. I'm gonna pull back all the way, push all the way. Pull back all the way, push all the way. Do you notice that my aircraft has lost all of that twitchiness which you saw earlier? Because what I've done is I've taken that elevator, which was very, very sensitive, and I've essentially eliminated half of its travel. Now, you're probably sitting here going, that seems really, really, really dangerous, because that means when you're coming in for a landing, you're basically going to be pulling that controller to your chest in order to get the thing to flare correctly. The answer is yes, exactly what will happen. So the other option, of course, is instead of editing and uh, basically damping our contract controls, it's the curves. Now, like I said, with the curves, you got to be kind of careful with these, and it's going to have a big impact specifically on uh, what you're going to be doing in your different modes here. So let's go back to my curve. Let's go ahead and return my sensitivity. But let's go, whoa, that would have been bad. <laughs> my elevator seems to be working not so well. So let's play with the sensitivity this time. Let's make it so that when the sensitivity is going to be lower, we'll reduce it by one third. Be careful with sensitivity, by the way, because if you reduce it too much on one axis and not on the other, it gets a little funky. So what I have now is I have reduced sensitivity, meaning I have to push my control a lot further to get the same response out of it. So if I close that, let's go ahead and push the button to kill the autopilot. Let's pull it back. Let's center it. Let's push forward. Let's center it. Let's pull back. And let's center it. Notice how gentle that was. You'll see that it had a very, very easy buildup of control and it had a very, very easy buildup of release, just like that. Fantastic. That's actually really, really good. That's very comfortable. I don't feel like I have to work too hard or too easily for that. Now, what about folks who have very, very short joysticks that have a very, very limited throw? A lot of times you're actually going to be adjusting the input in the opposite direction. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I'll open up my elevator axis again. Pop this one up here. We'll go to my action curve. And let's say you have a really short joystick. Mine's very long, so it's very sensitive. So let's go ahead and flip this the other way. Now, this is going to be interesting, and I don't know if I can manage this, but it's important that you see the demonstration. All right, point three, point three, zero, bup, bup, bup. Looks good to me. Go ahead and close that. Okay, let's see if I got what it takes here. So I'm going to shut off the autopilot. I'm going to go ahead and give it a pull. Oh, gosh, that's sensitive. Whoa. So I moved the control. Uh, what is that? About three centimeters but notice now if i'm holding this precisely look at how hard it is to hold it steady go ahead and bring the nose back down i'll try to hold it at five degrees oh my goodness there's five degrees right there i'll go ahead and push it down to the horizon oh my good what is this a huey <laughs> this thing's incredible but you can see my pitch sensitivity is incredible right now you know, if I want to put it right to here, I can just hold it right at 15 degrees, but it is taking every bit of concentration of my being in order to precisely hold things now because every little shake of my hand is instantly translated into movement of the aircraft. Now, if you're flying something like a helicopter, this is actually very authentic. If you're flying something like a 172 like we have here, it's actually not as far off as you think, but you can see that it is oversensitive and it's actually making it difficult for us to accurately control the aircraft which is not something you generally want to do. So let's go ahead and go back to our controls once more. Let's activate the autopilot first. <laughs> elevator access. Uh, of course, uh, there's no elevator access on my keyboard that checks. We go over here, back to the assignment curve, and I'm going to set it back the way it was. So now, as you can see, the things you're going to be looking for, if it is very, very difficult to precisely move, like every little twitch your hand causes things to go like this, reduce the sensitivity. If you're finding that it's really, really hard to put the plane where you want it, increase the sensitivity. And keep in mind, roll sensitivity is not gonna be yaw sensitivity, is not gonna be pitch sensitivity. One other thing that I'll point out too before uh, we let you folks kind of run away here is the fact that you can do this by aircraft. I can actually come down here and set this to be different for different aircraft as opposed to doing them all the same. So if you're doing a helicopter, you're gonna have a different response than if you're doing an Airbus A320. Enjoy.